Hello, and welcome aboard the first proper jet in the Soviet air tree, the MiG-9. Now, in true Soviet fashion, watch me waste the first three quarters of my ammunition in the first 30 seconds of the battle. The MiG-9 is probably one of my least favorite aircraft in War Thunder, and it's not because it's objectively bad. In fact, the frustration I get flying it comes from the difference in its theoretical potential and its practical performance. Really, it all comes down to the guns. See, it has the same weapons configuration as the MiG-15, and as such, it has the same problems. The 23mm and 37mm are extremely difficult to aim, and this is only made worse on the MiG-9 because the guns are farther apart on the nose than they are on the MiG-15. I mean, just look at this thing, it looks like a power plug. Unlike the MiG-15, the airframe is also quite frustrating. It's not a slow plane once you get it up to speed, but the trouble with the MiG-9 is it's very difficult to manage energy. It doesn't like to bleed speed in turns, and it also doesn't have an air brake, so once you're fast, it's hard to slow down. On the other hand, it's really slow to accelerate, so once you're slow, it's hard to speed up. All of this taken together means that the Big 9 is extremely good if you put it in exactly the right circumstance, but otherwise, you just swing and miss, swing and miss, and it becomes extremely frustrating. See that shooting star in front of me? That's gonna be there for a while. I don't have too much to say about the performance of the MiG-9. It's decent enough if you put it in a situation where it has to dogfight, and its flaps are usable if you're at low enough speed. As such, you can kind of surprise planes like the Shooting Star or even Sabres by turning tighter than they expect if you dump all of your speed and throttle down. The trouble is, the MiG-9 just shouldn't be fighting Sabres in the first place. And now that it is, because of the battle rating reductions in February, I, I really can't recommend flying this plane. See. At battle rating 7.3, it gets sucked straight into 8.3 games probably 60-70% of the time. And well, if you're fighting at 8.3, you're really just fighting for your life. This thing just isn't fast enough to survive under those circumstances. Now, as you can see on screen, the F-80C shooting star can easily outstrip the MiG-9 in a straight line at sea level. However, and this might be a surprise, the shooting star is actually not quite as nimble as the MiG-9 in a turning engagement, a fact that I will use to execute this player shortly.
was at about this point in the game that my luck began to run out. See, although we still have a few teammates flying around, they will all slowly but surely be eliminated by a Sabre and an F-89B on the enemy team, leaving only me and a MiG-15 Bis. Unfortunately for me, the MiG-15 is going to try to land, which leaves me as designated bait with no fuel and no ammo. And this is where this game really begins to shine. Because although I'm not going to be able to get any more gun kills, spoiler alert, I do manage to see this game to the finish in a rather clever fashion. I'll let the footage speak for itself. The MiG-9 is, in my opinion, a good introduction to jet combat for Soviet mains. It might be a little frustrating to play, and it's certainly not the most competitive with the current matchmaking. But with a little experience about the characteristics of the individual aircraft you'll be facing, it's still certainly usable. With the introduction of the Su-9 and the Su-11 at 7.0, I'm not sure that this will be the best starter jet anymore, but I've yet to grind those out, so I guess we'll have to see. Thanks for hanging out.